What's up everyone? Welcome back to Living Survival. My name is Ben and today we're going to take a look at something that's certainly unique. It's a new knife from William Collins. It's the William Collins Survival Knife. So this knife is definitely unique, definitely a little bit different. And when I signed on to become part of the test group for this knife, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. Now this is the WCSK, the William Collins Survival Knife. It's got 3 16 inch 01 tool steel. Now he may be making a version in LMAX, uh, a little bit higher priced on the LMAX version, but a little bit tougher. Now this knife has been put through the paces by not only myself, but other people that were in the test group as well. And it is a beast of a knife without really being overly large as some other blades out there are. It really, in my opinion, is a as close as you can get to a one tool option for a knife now i really dislike the term one tool option i'm a guy who's either going to take a uh, belt knife and a saw in the summertime uh, a belt knife and an axe in the winter time just depending on what type of firewood i'm going to need what types of woods tasks i'm going to do but Again, this is as close to that one tool uh, option. And if I had to pick one knife, I'd have a hard time uh, passing this one up. It's got green canvas micarta handles with brass pins. Again, it's unpolished, which I really like in my knives. They are a lot more grippy, especially when wet than the polished knives uh, can be. So I really like the handle. It does have a bow drill divot in one side. Now be, me being a lefty, I'd prefer to have it in the opposite side. Not that I'm going to use a bow drill divot in a knife anyway. If I'm going to go through the trouble of carving a bow drill set, most likely I'm going to carve myself a uh, bearing block. So it's got a saber grind with a secondary uh, bevel. These knives are all done by hand so they're cut out by hand they are uh, ground by hand finished by hand the handles are all finished by hand so although uh, these are part of a series or a part of a semi-production uh, line by William, William meaning he's going to make them in batches no two of these knives are going to be exactly alike and now getting back to how I felt when I initially saw this knife I wasn't sure how I was going to like it it's got the sort of tanto tip up front it's got that saber grind and then it has a sweep uh, back towards the handle now pulling it out of the box the handle is very comfortable right off the bat the fit and finish is uh, perfect you know the handles line up perfectly the blade geometry uh, is perfect so for a knife that's done completely by hand you know you're getting a top uh, notch product here so the WCSK also has another meaning besides William Collins survival knife it means woodcraft it means combat, it means survival, and it means kitchen. So again, getting back to that one tool option, you know, this knife is capable uh, of doing all those things. It's a great camp knife. It's a great, uh, you know, knife to go out and bushcraft with or ho uh, hobby with. You can do small chopping with it. You can, of course, carve with it. Uh, as a combat knife, it does have the Tonto tip in it. Now, if you were going to use this as a combat knife, I'd like to see a little bit more of a finger guard, maybe, uh, it, maybe in a future version. Survival, you know, again, that one tool option really relates to the word survival. If you had to pick one tool or had one tool, which would you want? And this, for me, is, is definitely high on the list. And then, of course, kitchen. You can use it to game prep. You can use it to food prep. Uh, being 01 steel, it is going to have a little bit of maintenance to it. You know, you are going to want to keep it oiled. Overall, it's just a refreshing design. It's always nice to see a different take on the you know millions of designs that are out there and have it be so functional. A lot of times when uh, you know a, a maker reaches out or or steps outside of the box and makes something, you know it's really a hit or miss uh, with the functionality. But I really feel that this has all that functionality built in with the several different uh, points that it has and all the the usability that it has. So a lot of testing went into this knife, including uh, tip testing. Again, it's got that stout tip there. The 
uh, the thickness of the blade goes almost all the way to the tip there. So you have a very stout tip. And of course you've got this whole full tang here to support it. Now it does have a larger belly that's gonna help with the chopping, but uh, you know, you can definitely stab or you could definitely, uh, you know, pry or stab your way into, uh, into materials, use it as sort of a, a combat or a survival type knife. So that's certainly one use. Woodcraft being another use, you know, you can certainly chop with this knife. Uh, I find that, you know, my, my most comfortable chopping position for this knife is just the full handle. Uh, but that's not the most functional way to chop with this knife. Functional wise, it's, it's uh, you know, better to choke back here. I feel that I get a little bit of a hot spot with this ridge here, just right in between my hands there when I'm chopping with it, but it certainly does the job. And then again, you're not gonna go crazy uh, with a knife like this as you would maybe an ax. You're gonna do light hobby type, you know, craft chops, and it's certainly capable of doing that. With the blade profile here, you have several different areas that you can use. You have the straight area here, which would be good for maybe food prep or meal prep. Uh, again, chopping, you've got your, uh, you know, your tanto uh, tip here, which is gonna be good for piercing or stabbing. And then you've got this sweep here, which is gonna be good for your finer tasks, carving, whittling, uh, things like that. Now the spine on this is super duper sharp, uh, too sharp in my opinion, back here where your thumb rests. Uh, you know, that'd be nice if that was at least rounded over there or maybe a little bit of jimping there just to give you a little bit better control there. Handle-wise, again, when you're in this full grip, it's very comfortable uh, in my hands, uh, not only forward but reverse as well. So maybe a little bit of a rounded edge there, but the top being sharp like that, a lot of people like that because they use that to strike their ferro rod. I always have a separate striker that I use, so it's not a big deal for me, but it is super sharp. And another use for that would be scraping down tinder off a cedar tree, for example. You know, you could scrape some birch bark with that. And uh, you know, so there's definitely multi uses in this knife. Another feature that William puts in his knives is this hidden lanyard. So that's nice. You can get this lanyard out of the way and then you could use the, uh, the back here for crushing things like nuts or breaking down uh, fibrous materials. So again, as a woodsman knife or as a survival knife, it really hits all those, uh, those marks as far as what it's capable of doing. So something that's always highly debatable is do you baton or do you not baton? In the summertime when I use a lot of wood stoves, I baton. It's a very quick way for me to process down a, a log of this size. I can use my saw and just saw a chunk out like that. And from this chunk, I can get tons of uh, little kindling that I can use in a wood stove. Again, I'm not building a huge fire, so I don't need an ax. I don't need to process big logs. So, so batoning definitely has its place for me. So that's one thing that I like my woods knives to be able to do. And you definitely have the length here. You've got five and a half inches or so of, you know, full blade here. So you can, you know, you can easily get enough blade uh, beyond the, the diameter of the log that you're batoning that you're going to have enough surface on the other side to hit, which can be a problem with some of the shorter four inch knives. Uh, again, especially if your wood is wet, you know, you don't want to go with anything, you know, more thin than this because you're really looking for the, the heartwood or the, the, the wood at the core of the, uh, the, the limb that you've cut down or the log that you've cut down if you had to start a, a fire in wet conditions. But we've got a pretty good piece here of uh, some pine, so we're going to go ahead. Now, it do, it's not straight all the way across. It's got, you know, this straight sweep here and then sort of a, a concave uh, uh, sweep towards the handle there. But what is nice is that it gives you a starting point for your baton. You know, it really sort of helps you just get your baton seated in there and started. And then you're going to be, you know, splitting the rest of the wood uh, with the blade. Now it is a saber grind. Saber grind, in my opinion, is one of the best for splitting wood. So it should have no problem uh, batoning through this wood. Now again, even though I didn't even start at the handle of the blade, I still have another inch there of blade play. I still have plenty of surface on the other side to uh, finish through my baton. You can see here that saber, that saber uh, grind there just punches right through that wood. No problem. Again, I really like the fact that you've got that point there. It helps you get that knife started and then you can see there that the rest of the way, the rest of the knife is going to follow through. So it's just little things like that that you just you don't see from a drawing, you don't see from a picture, and until you actually get out here 
and uh, you know put it to the test, put it to some use. It's little features like that that help out a great bit. So I'm actually out in the woods camping with uh, William Myers this weekend. So it's always nice when you can get someone else's perspective on the gear that you're testing. So he's been playing with this knife a little bit and uh, you're gonna plane down this, this uh, chunk of wood? Yeah, there's a couple of little gnarly knots here, but you know, I'm gonna try to plane out a section of it just to try that out. There's so many different grind angles on here, so many different options for, for crafting and cutting and things like that. So what I'm gonna try to do is focus on the flattest section of the blade first. And we're just gonna go beyond that knot and just try to get a flat surface going. It's gonna take me a little while to work down to something that's actually flat. But just feeling the heft of the blade and the cutting power that it has, it's really nice. You know, just me personally, just picking up this blade, you know, I'm the type of person that, that, that kind of basic, you know, I like having a, just a, a basic plane straight angle and that's where I would start my plane at down here. You know, but having it up here, it's not really that big of a deal, it's not really that big of a difference. And it seems to be doing a really good job. And point of fact, actually, if I start my plane like here, and then I have this ridge here that I want to straighten out this side of, you know, I cut here, now I have a ridge here and I want to plane out this side, I could kind of put that point right there and that's where I start my next plane. So, man, that's an added benefit, a surprising benefit in my opinion. So although you only have a five and a half inch blade, which is shorter than a lot of the other chopper or, or what people consider to be a chopping knife. You can certainly do a fair amount of chopping with this blade. Now, you know, the best uh, position to hold this in would be probably this, this rear position of the handle here. You know, the handle is sort of like a Coke bottle. It's sort of like a symmetrical Coke bottle where you have a divot up front and you have a divot in the back. So if you grab that, uh, you know, the handle towards the back there, it does lend itself to some really good chopping ability. Now, the knife does tend to develop a hot spot uh, just on the inside of my thumb there uh, after a while of chopping. But again, you're not going to go overboard with this knife. You're not going to do, you know, some crazy chops with this knife. You're just going to pretty much do some craft chopping with it, you know, to make yourself some notches or to, uh, you know, just to just to chop out a piece. You could take down a small, you know, a small sapling with this, but. You know, you really do get a, a good purchase with the blade. You can see there when I'm hitting this, it's that flat portion of the blade that is hitting or doing the chopping. So, you know, the way that the blade uh, profile is done, you really do get two or three separate points of contact there uh, with the blade. You get that batoning chopping ability with the, the forward part, the middle part. You get that fine uh, fine work portion with the, uh, the part closest up to the handle, obviously where you want it, the most control. And then you get that flat chopping surface uh, towards the back of the knife as well. So, you know, you can see here just with some very light chops. Again, you know, I'm not gonna go crazy with the knife like this, but just some very light chops. You know, you can take a pretty decent chunk you know, out of a piece of wood. And it's, it, it is comfortable. I, you know, I tend to just get a little bit of a hot spot up there on my finger. Uh, you could throw your, your uh, pinky finger through this, uh, the leather lanyard that you have here. You could make yourself a whole hand lanyard if you wanted. But uh, what that's gonna do is that's gonna help, you know, the knife from slipping out of your hand. And that's actually making it more comfortable because I don't have to grip as hard on the knife uh, in fear that it's gonna slip out. I know the knife's not going anywhere now. So that actually changes the game quite a bit, just slipping your finger uh, into that lanyard hole. Now the most comfortable spot on this knife is to uh, just grip the handle normally, but you're just not gonna get enough leverage uh, you know, with, with holding it like that that you're gonna get by choking back. Uh, just in letting the blade do the work and you know that's that's what I'm all about when it comes to the tools that I use in the woods is you know I really try to let the tool do the work uh, if you have the right tools you're gonna have no problem in accomplishing that the knife has a decent balance pretty good control I'm just picking my ridges and running them down with the angle of the blade itself 
and it seems really smooth and controlled pretty impressed by it you know Ben showed me this knife and I was just like wow okay that's that's quite unusual and I wasn't really sure how it was gonna work out it's, it is really nice pretty nice yeah it definitely does the job and I'm not putting really that much effort into doing it I'm not struggling at all pretty nice the handle of the knife is something that when I first grabbed it I was like wow that's way different like, that's really different it's a little square but not too bad it's something that I think maybe I, I would grow into like again get used to this is the, literally the first time I've held the knife but it's not bad it's pretty pretty decent all right so Will was doing some feathers on uh, some pine I've got some birch here uh, now you know again you get that you get a lot of control from this this portion right up towards the blade here so I can just get this started take some of this bark off here and again let the tool do the work this thing came insanely sharp from William I know why he says carry lots of band-aids because uh, you know it came insanely sharp so let me remove some of this outer bark here and kind of get your your stick prepped here all right so then you can use that that upper sweep there towards the handle and you can start to get some curls going and you want to develop your ridges here now this is a lot harder wood than that pine and the thing about birch is when you start to shave it down like this it turns almost into like glass it just gets so smooth so you really need to keep you know spinning the blade here and getting those edges because if you just try to keep going down the same edge it's just like glass I mean it's just super smooth you know a lot of a lot of craft items are made out of birch for that reason is that it's a, just a it's a nice nice hardwood hardwood but still semi easy to work with so yeah, one of my most favorite woods to work with is is paper birch. It's a yeah, really you can great see wood. See how nice that is. You know, you can make a cane out of that or something, and you know, just really nice. You could make a beautiful set of stakes with that. that you know, stakes that you wouldn't want to throw out every time you leave camp. But uh, definitely, even on this harder wood, you know, as long as you keep your your edges going here, it's doing a beautiful job. And again, that handle is maintaining its comfort. You know, I've said it before in other videos, but I really like uh, knives that where my blade ends at where my handle stops. You know, I don't like when you have a half inch of room there. I feel like you lose a lot of control that way uh, by having that gap in there. And so by closing that gap, having the blade go all the way towards the handle, it really gives you that, that nice control. And one way you can see how much control you have is you can see that these curls aren't folding over to the left or the right they're going straight down which you know is a good indication that the that the knife is doing the work you can of course uh, sometimes force the the curls to go different ways by the the angle that you hold the knife in but you know a good indication to me of a knife that does some good feathering is that when you can just pull it right out of the box grab a piece of wood and you can just start carving down on it and those feathers go straight down it's doing a good job and again back to the chopping ability you know if you're gonna make yourself a set of steaks or something you can pretty easily round off or make a tip at the uh, the point of the wood here just by some light chops very comfortable again the tools doing the work all I got to do is aim and swing And you know, obviously this, obviously this is one jumbo steak, but again, with the fine control that you have, the whittling capability of this knife, again, I can use that secondary portion of the blade and go right from one task to another with ease. Even when it comes to the really small stuff, like you know, blunting over this uh, this edge here. 
Got a lot of control. Even with a bigger knife like this. All right, so one thing about this knife is it looks like it has a complete streamlined spear point, or Tonto, as Ben was saying. And one of the things that that's gonna lend itself to is really symmetrical hole drilling for like say bow drill divots and things like that. Starting a bow drill, you're really gonna get a nice even hole. And people ask me, well, what's the big deal about that? If you have a nice even hole like this, you're gonna have a much easier time starting your bow drill and getting burnt in and then proceeding from there other than this you know wanky you know unsymmetrical hole but that in my opinion did a really good job you know when i was feeling this knife i just couldn't help but notice the just extremely sharp spine that this thing has and you know there's we're up here in northern michigan and there's just a ton of this white cedar up here and might as well take advantage of that spine and just get some tender because we're getting ready to cook lunch. Just look how good that does. Man, that's coming off the tree pretty much processed to its fullest. Not too much that I'd have to do with that. All right, so this is the white cedar bark that we processed from the tree, and literally we processed it right off the tree. You can kind of tell, I haven't taken my time and really processed this down because it came this fibrous right off the tree because this spine is that sharp. So let's just put a couple sparks into it, see what happens here. Anchors. Got to catch it right at the right time. There we go. Yeah, I'm jealous. You guys got all the stuff that I want in Ohio. You guys got the white cedars. Although we got the red cedars. You guys got the paper bar, birch. You guys got the yellow birch. We got some of that, but I definitely would like to have the white birch that you guys have. Stuff's going pretty good. You see, this thing just, like Ben said, smokes a ferro rod. Ooh, caught one on my finger. And the good thing about it is, is that, well, especially a ferro rod like this, you can, with a sharp knife spine like this, you can kind of shave down your ferro rod and then get a really, really good spinal spark. And that'll even get some of the most cantankerous tenders going. So you can either order the WCSK with or without a sheath. Your sheath option is limited to uh, this Kydex, which in my opinion, you know, isn't the greatest. Uh, it's just something that was put together to uh, protect the knife and to keep, you know, the blade protected. Uh, most likely, most people that get this knife are going to have an aftermarket sheath made. I know uh, Justin Wolf of Wolf Customs, I believe, is working on a sheath system for this knife, and I'm certainly going to probably pick that up. I prefer leather anyway for my woods knives, but it is an option to pick up one of these Kydex sheaths. It does come with a tech lock. Uh, you can either get it in this pancake style, or I believe you can get it in taco style as well. But due to the thickness of the blade here and the thinness of the handle it it has scratched the blade a little bit uh, because you do have to literally push that wide section through in order to uh, to seat the knife now the knife isn't going anywhere it does seat in there although you don't get a real solid click again just a a fairly quickly put together in my opinion uh, kydex sheath uh, so, you know, you're probably going to want to get either a better Kydex sheath made or, in my opinion, get a nice leather sheath uh, for this knife.
All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video today, taking a look at the William Collins Survival Knife. Now, he is going to do another version of this knife, possibly an LMAX steel, possibly a coated blade, something that may appeal more to uh, military, possibly, or law enforcement. Again, he kind of made this as a multi-purpose knife, and it certainly is multi-purpose not only as a woods knife but also you know sort of a survival knife it's probably as close to a one tool option as i've ever tested i've never really bought into the whole one tool option but again this is probably as close as you can get it can do the fine stuff it can you know it can do the light chopping it can do all your camp tasks it can do food prep it can do uh you know game uh prep of course it's got that tanto style tip on it so you know the tip is nice and stout you could you know fight with it if you needed to you can certainly stab things with it uh you pry things with it so you know it's a good overall uh like i said as close to a one tool option uh as i've found and it is quite comfortable in all the different positions that you could use uh this knife and i find it to be very comfortable now the sheath not huge on the sheath uh, you know, not huge on Kydex overall, really, with my, especially with my woods knives. I'll probably get a leather sheath made for it in the future, uh, slim it down a little bit, and then it'll be more uh, pocketable or more carryable uh, for me. I'm going to leave a link below to William's website where you guys can pick one of these up for yourselves. Now, he is doing them in batches. Batches of 10, I believe, every month, so you'll get a serialized uh, knife uh, as it goes along. So if you guys want one of these, I'll leave uh, William's contact uh, information below. Now, again, this is a fully custom knife. So it's, you know, no water jet, no CNC machines. It is cut out by hand. It's ground by hand. It's, it's uh, finished by hand. So you're truly getting a one of a kind. And although these are semi-production, according to William, because he's doing batches at a time, no two knives are going to be identical. So, you know, this is a knife that really has grown on me since I first saw it. I was like, that is one ugly knife. I don't know how that's going to function, but it's just one of those things you get in your hand, you start to use it, and you start to really like it. And that's, uh, that's how I feel about this particular knife. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Please give it a big thumbs up for me. Make sure you leave me a comment below. Please share this video to any friends or family who you think might be interested uh, in the William Collins Survival Knife. As always, if you haven't already done so, please click that red subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of when this wind calms down. <laughs>